Does this image, don't worry about if it means anything to you, but does this image ring any bells whatsoever? Yes. Bell, it rings bells, okay, good. What you're looking at here is, um, and I'll scroll a little further down because you can't see the whole thing, sorry about that. What you're looking at here is a typical superannuation situation, yeah? Shh. Stay with me, you 12, I know it's the end of the day. Typical superannuation situation in that um, we've got regular installments going in and each year interest also gets calculated. So which part of the graph or which parts of the graph are the regular installments? Can you remind me? Vertical. Yep, fantastic. It's those little vertical intervals, right? And that's why you can see it's the same vertical jump every time because I'm putting in the same installment every time. Okay, so that's good. And then you've got these bits joining the vertical lines, these kind of slanty bits, and they get more and more slanty as you go. What are those? Interest calculation is perfect. So that's why they get um, steeper as you go along, because you've got more money in the bank or in the superannuation fund, so you get more interest. Okay. So very good. We have this situation here. Okay. Now, you may recall, and you can even see it there on the left, especially when you've got a situation like this, where you're like many, many years, right? We use the sum of a GP, the sum of a geometric progression, to be able to work out this figure up here, future value, right? And within the scope of the course, we can operate all of the machinery to do that. Like that formula over there, uh, it might take some remembering, but we can do it, okay? It's part of series and sequences. But, number one, we don't want to always have to go to doing this by hand. Right, number one. Number two, we don't even necessarily want to do this with a spreadsheet, which is what we looked at a couple of days back, right? This is such a common situation that in fact, all kinds of ordinary people who don't understand the mathematics underneath this want to be able to interact with this. And that's why we hand them tables, okay? Now, a future value table, uh, I'll show you one. Those of you who managed to download it successfully um, will have this guy here. Um, on the first page of your PDF. So if you have it there, open it up. But if you don't have it there yet, do not spend time finding it. You'll be able to see this the whole time. I'm not going to take it away. Okay? I'll show you later. Okay? Um, if you haven't got it yet, like I said, we'll catch up. But what you're looking at here is a future value table. What does it tell you? If you were to invest a dollar, just one, at a certain interest rate, you can see them across the top. Uh, the, these are the different columns at different interest rates. For different amounts of time, that's the different rows, okay? If you invested a dollar, how much would that dollar be worth, okay? So let's just give a, a quick example, right? If I invested a dollar at a 4% interest per annum, so you can see which column I'm on, the 4% one, right? And if I invested that for, say, six years, and remember, this is, uh, this is a superannuation annuity situation, so it's not just a dollar and that's it. I keep on putting extra dollars in each year, right? If that's my installment. If I did this for six years, what would I end up with? What would the future value of that installment be? And the answer is, you can read down to the correct column and row, it'd be worth $6.63, okay? Now hopefully that at least like roughly makes sense to you because you're like, if I was doing it for six years, I at least put six individual dollars in there and then the 63 cents is what? This is, this is the interest, right? That's the whole point of putting money into this, okay? So, this kind of table can be used. You can see, you don't need to know anything about geometric progressions to be able to say, oh, this amount of money for this long at this interest rate, I'm just gonna look at the table, okay? But, we do know all that stuff with geometric progressions. So that's why we're gonna answer these two questions. Number one, where do these numbers come from? They're just like, out of thin air, like 6.633 says who, right? And then once we know where they come from, because we have that knowledge, where they're going to say, okay, well, how do we then use these tables, right? So let's have a go at this. And that example that I just gave you before, let's start by writing that one down. Let's try and get at where this number comes from, 6.633. So as an example, we are considering um, a $1 annuity. So remember what that means, a dollar is going in at regular installments. Um, what do we say, 4% interest per annum? Now by the way, you might notice um, there's no mention of per annum or years or anything like that on this table um, because I could just as easily use this to say, what if I had 8% interest per annum, but I compounded biannually. Is that right? Biannual. Biannual is once every two years. Biannual is twice in a year, okay? So if I had 8% per interest, 
and I did it twice in a year, each chunk would be 4%. Do you agree with that? So I'm just thinking about it in simple terms, but we can multi-purposely use this table. Okay, Ishan, question? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the whole idea? We can take an interest rate and we can compound at different frequencies, right? We could compound daily, monthly, whatever. Um, biannually would be to do it twice in a year, right? So an 8% interest rate done twice, or well, each component, like the first half of the year you get 4%, and the second half of the year you get 4% again, okay? Uh, what time period did we say? I think we said six years, right? Should we go with that? Six years. Okay, now, big important thing to state because every table does this slightly differently. So if you have another color, please get it out because we're going to write something super important. Uh, the installment, I'm going to put this in red. The installments for this table, okay, installments happen at the end of a year. Installments happen at the end of the year. Now, as we form the geometric progression that will land us on these numbers, as we've seen before, whether the installment happens at the start or at the end kind of makes a big difference. It'll throw your numbers out if you don't recognize this, okay? Um, it's a bit sneaky. This table on its own, right, doesn't provide you this context. Um, the document you've downloaded does actually say that in the paragraph above, but I'm highlighting it now for you, okay? So here's our mission. We want to try and get at that number. How do we do this? Well, what I'm going to say is I'm going to start off by uh, letting, let's just get some pronumerals in here so we can work with this situation. So let's let A N be um, the amount that's in the superannuation fund, in the annuity, um, the amount, or I should say the, uh, the total amount, um, at the end of N years, right? So A1 would be at the end of the first year, A2 at the end of the second year, and so on. So let's let AN equal the total amount at the end of the nth year. Okay, so this will be our model. Um, therefore, we can say what A1 is by definition, okay? So this is just at the end of the first year. What has happened in the course of this 12 months? Um, if I go back to the image, this will hopefully help you, this graph here, right? You can actually see it there at the end of the first year. Um, what's happened? Just put the, the money in. Yeah, the money's just gone in, right? Because my installment went in at the end of that year, right? So I get this $1, <laughs> massive installment, right? Uh, nothing's happened to it. It hasn't been there long enough to accrue interest. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the $1 goes in at the end of year zero, right? Uh, so I'm calling it the first, first year. Uh, it's true I could define it as like A0 or A1, etc. Whatever makes most sense to me, I'm just calling the first year, year one, okay? Um, that's it. The, you know, because it happened at the end, no interest, I'm done, which corresponds to that horizontal line at the bottom, and then it just goes up, and that's it, okay? Uh, coming back to this so we can refer to it, that's A1, A2. All right, so what happens in this second year? Um, same deal, right? Two things happen. Um, there's going to be interest, and then there's going to be an installment. Which one happens first? The interest. Hmm. the interest happens first because, as stated, the installment is the very last thing to happen. Okay. So we're going to start with this, which is a dollar, and then we apply our interest to that. Um, how do I do that? I multiply by 1.04. Okay. So let's just pop that in. 1.04. Interest has happened, and then the second thing is another dollar comes in. There's our second installment. Okay, uh, we've done A1, we've done A2. We only need one more to establish the pattern. So A3 will equal uh, the two things happen again, and they happen in the same order every time. Okay, so this is that recursive idea that we mentioned on Monday. Okay, uh, everything that you can see here gets interest applied to it. Is that okay? So let's go through and do it one at a time. Here's the first one. That's what it was before, and now I plop another um, calculation of interest onto it. So it's now squared. So far, so good? Yeah. Here comes the next one. This is all last year's money, remember? It gets its interest, and then final piece of the puzzle, the end of the year arrives, and we add a third installment, because we're in the third year. Okay. 